What's up, everybody? So a few months ago, I wrote an article titled What I Learned After a Year as a Cybersecurity Mentor. Now, I took that article, I put it around and uh, for some talk submissions, and I got lucky and got into Wild West Hacking Fest. So I'm going to be talking about this more in depth at Wild West Hacking Fest, but it's gotten to the point where I'm starting to get bombarded with what I consider bad technical questions and bad methodology to approach a mentor. And I just kind of want to do a PSA, some some sort of off the cuff video today where we talk about mentorship and how to approach a mentor the correct way and the incorrect way. So I'm going to bring up some right and wrongs and talk about the differences and what I see and what would make me actually respond to an email because I get a lot of emails. I I want to say thousands. That's not realistic, but I probably get at least 100 emails a week just asking for advice. So let's go ahead and just take a look at some of these these good and bad ways to approach a mentor. All right, so there are right and wrong ways, as I've said. Now, there are really two kinds of people to me that stand out when it comes to seeking mentorship. There are, one, people that are truly looking for guidance. They need help, they, they need career advice, and they need something that's not a quick Google question. The other half of the people are those that are looking for a handout. There's are people that you can tell clearly didn't go to Google. They're, they're not willing to put in the work and they just they want that handout whether it be a quick question that's easily answered or a question like hey help me on this exam or help me on this test or do something for me uh, so you're going to see two examples of that here or the examples of both types here and you're going to really get to see what i kind of deal with and for me personally i would say 75 percent of the emails i get are probably people that are seeking a handout or could have Googled this question and answered it themselves, and they don't put in the work. Uh, and if you are familiar with cybersecurity or you wanna get into the field of cybersecurity, this is another PSA. It's a lot of hard work. Uh, this is not a job that you can rely solely on others for or get handheld all the way through, especially when it comes to pen testing, but this is all across cybersecurity. You might have jobs in IT where you find people that are complacent, that are happy to be in the same place day in, day out for years at a time. When you get into the field of cybersecurity and you start moving up the ranks, you're going to find that everybody is almost just like you. You're going to find people study every night. They are looking at the latest blog posts. They're reading the latest articles, and they're doing that because they need to stay on top of the game or else they're going to get left behind. So I'm saying all this because if you are a handout type of person, you need to change that right now. Cybersecurity is not a field for handouts. People are not going to help you if you cannot go to Google and answer your questions for yourself or if you seek handouts for exam answers or anything like that. There is a rite of passage when it comes to struggling your way through and it will only help you get better in your career if you take that struggle and you embrace it. So let's take a look at some quick examples of both good and bad questions that I've received lately. All right, example one, I'm not gonna read all of this to you, but this person emailed me very recently and they emailed me three times actually. And they wanted to get uh, me to do their exam for them. So how much will it cost for you to do my exam? It, it, this is really the point to highlight here. The <laughs> cheating is not going to get you anywhere, especially if you're trying to be a pen tester. What good is it going to do? And this boils down to other things as well, right? Like you, you hear about people cheating on certification exams and using that to try to get job interviews. What good is it going to do you when you get into a job interview and you don't know what you're talking about? This is a big issue here. So number two. I get these all the time as well. Very short and sweet. Uh, hello, sir. I want to be web pen tester. Please guide me. This is a Google question. These are questions I will never respond to. There's just not enough time in the day to respond to everybody. And when you're asking questions like this, a mentor is not going to respond to you. So if you want a mentor to respond to you, don't ask Google questions. 
you can easily type in web penetration tester, uh, how to become a web penetration tester, right? Into Google and find this answer pretty quick. Uh, there are plenty of resources out there and I'm preaching to the choir for a lot of you that there's plenty of resources out there. Plenty of people compile lists all the time on how to become a, a pen tester, web pen tester, uh, uh, XYZ in cybersecurity, right? So these types of questions really drive a mentor crazy. On top of this, uh, I am a member of the Synac Red Team and this person had applied to the Synac Red Team and they are getting their technical assessment to start soon. Now, Synac Red Team, you have to earn your way in. You do a technical assessment, you write a report, and the people who are qualified and deserve to get in, get in. Now, he, this person, wanted to know what the exam looked like ahead of time. Again, what does this benefit you? Yes, you'll access the platform, but if you didn't have the skills ahead of time to be a, a qualified enough to get on there, you're not gonna have the skills to find the bounties that are, are in the platform. You gotta think that everybody that's in the platform already has a skill set to find the bounties. So if you don't have that skill set and you're gonna cheat your way in, you're gonna be way below everybody else as it is, and you're just gonna ride the struggle bus. So again, these things drive mentors crazy. So let's take a look at a couple of good examples, right? For good examples, we want things that are not easily Googled. We want something that as a mentor would directly relate to experience that we've had in the past and can actually provide guidance on. So this one's really good, right? Hello, thanks for adding me. I really appreciate that you're willing to help me out in a career development. I'm eager to learn and I'm passionate about NetSec. Now, let's, let's stop here and say, they were a little uh, presumptuous that I was going to to answer back, but I did answer back because I think it's a good question. Um, what are your recommendations after the EJPT student course? Uh, I was thinking about PTP and OSCP, but quite sure with money and needed to save uh, that for courses. So why did this person reach out and why did they ask this question? They asked this question because I had experience in this, right? It wasn't how do I become a pen tester? It wasn't what certifications do I need to be successful? It was, hey, I Googled the EJPT. I know about the PTP. I know about the OSCP. I'm doing my work on the back end. I'm looking at these things, but I just want to know from your perspective, was it a good choice? Did you value it? Was it worth your time? I think this is a fine question to ask somebody because you're, you're showing here, you've done your research and you just need help uh, reassuring yourself that this course is worth it or maybe isn't worth it from somebody's experience. So great question. Let's look at the second question here. Heath, I'll jump right into it. My kind of person. Uh, I'm about to land my first penetration tester role as a consultant. Do you have any tips or things you wish you would have done differently when you first started? Also, has there ever been a time you didn't find anything in a test? This is a great question or great series of questions. One, because it's not a thing that's easily Googleable, right? You can't just look these things up. These are perfect questions to ask a mentor because these are things that are valid to be worried about. My first penetration test, I was so nervous about not finding anything. And you just have to realize that that's part of the job, right? And it's okay. So when, when you're starting these new jobs and these, these gigs like this, having a mentor to guide you through those nerves, perfectly acceptable, right? And this is, this is what we're after in the field. This is exactly what we're after. So coming back here, Cybersecurity, it, it's not for everybody. It just isn't. You, you have a lot of people that, that come into this field and they think it's sexy or they want to get into this field and they think it's sexy. And it is sexy. You get to hack. If you're a pen tester like me, I hack all day, right? And I, I sit at home, sometimes in my underwear, uh, sometimes in my fake Gucci hoodie that I'm wearing. Uh, and I, I love my job. I love everything about my job, but that does not mean that it's not hard work. And like I said before, the amount of effort that it takes to stay in this field, to get to this field, one, to stay in this field, two, is tremendous. You have to be passionate. You have to really love it. And you can't just be picking a job only because it's sexy. If you do not have the work ethic, especially to Google questions that need to be asked that you can answer yourself, you're not going to survive in this field. So if you are that person and you self-identify and you say, hey, this is me, I've been doing the wrong way. This is the time to change it. Start doing things for yourself, ride the struggle bus a little bit, 
and approach mentors with questions that they can relate to. If you want to really get good feedback and you're, you need that mentorship, there are plenty of people out there willing to give it to you, but you have to be willing to ask the right questions. And that's really what this boils down to. So if you are asking the wrong questions, PSA for you. If you are asking the right questions, great. This is also an opportunity for everybody. Everybody has this opportunity to not only be the person who asks questions, but be the person willing to answer the questions as well. So PSA number three, be willing to be a mentor. Being a mentor is very, very rewarding. And it allows you to stay on top of your game as well. You have people that are asking you questions and maybe you don't know the answer, but maybe you could find somebody that does. It helps you improve your network, helps you improve your research on some topics as well. And it's just rewarding because you can help people that have been where you were before. Just because you are maybe just now entering the field or you are trying to get into the field or you've been in the field that you wanna be in, doesn't mean that somebody has not been in your shoes before and can really use your advice. Wherever you are at right now, somebody is a step below where you were before and could use your help. And same advice for you, wherever you're trying to get, somebody has been there before and is willing to help you, but you have to be willing to ask the right questions. And that's all it boils down to. So this is my short, short rant that I wanted to get out. PSA, public service announcement, please ask right questions to mentors. And if you're not getting responses, there's a reason why. Uh, you know, and there are some great resources out there. Uh, she Hacks Purple on Twitter. Uh, Tanya is her name. She Hacks Purple. Go to her Twitter page on Mondays. Every single Monday, she does a Mentoring Monday. Fantastic shout out. Uh, I think she's a great resource. And she tries to get mentors together where they, she starts a thread and just says, hey, who needs a mentor? And what are you looking for a mentor in? And then people out there will respond and say, hey, I, I can help you in X, Y, Z. Uh, or I'm willing to mentor X, Y, Z. And then people respond to that. So great, great uh, thread on Twitter. Uh, on top of that, there are great communities out there. There are plenty of Discord channels. There are plenty of subreddits. There are plenty of people on Twitter. You just have to look through the right resources to find those. I'll link some of my favorite resources down below in the description. You're more than willing to check those out. And again, if you've enjoyed this video, I say it every time, please do share it with a friend. Hit that like button, that subscribe button. Hit the bell to get notifications on later videos. Uh, I really do appreciate you joining me. If you've got uh, opinions or any comments on this, please do comment down below and let, let me know your thoughts on this as well. So thank you for joining me and until next time, I'm the Cyber Mentor.